Right, so uh, the cases are together now, and I've I've uh, just uh, talked them all up and uh, cleaned them, got rid of all the uh, excess well seal and so on. So they're looking nice, and just double check that everything's running smoothly, which it is. It's all really nice. So uh, what I'm doing next is I'm going to fit the uh, oil pressure release valve and the anti drain valve or actually anti wet sump valve. So oil pressure relief valve so it's designed as the name would suggest um, to release excess pressure uh, let's get this right yeah um, so like on startup and that uh, and it's set as, as it says here it's set at I think 70 psi so it goes above 70 then this valve opens it's on a spring there's a piston in there and if the pressure is too great then it uh, the oil um, the pressure pushes the plunger piston back in and allows oil uh, to bypass the uh, uh, the big ends etc uh, and then as the pressure drops then that valve closes so uh, the main thing is to check it's working which I have done by uh, putting the uh, slide and the piston in and just checking it moves freely uh, and comes in and out that's, that's difficult so I can't do it now no, it won't go in there what's happening probably got a bit of grit or something else to check that but I have checked it there we go and uh, it moves in and out nice and freely uh, and then there are two gaskets on it there's a bigger gasket and a smaller gasket because um, it's in two parts so that that screws into the engine and then there's the cap so the cap's got its own gasket and um, the uh, engine bit's got its own gasket and I'll, I'll also put some um, thread lock on just to try and stop it stop it leaking because it's such an awkward place to get to that if it does start leaking you know then it's a pain then there's the uh, so-called anti-drain valve. I say so-called because it don't generally work. They don't work. Uh, and there's its crush, copper crush washer. That's the old one um, uh, to seal it up with. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the, the, the ball bearing sits uh, um, over an oil way. And the idea is, it's only on a very light spring, the idea is that uh, that ball bearing seals the oil way so that oil cannot drain from the oil tank down into the sump of the engine when the bike is standing still for any length of time. Um, the problem is it doesn't work and the oil seeps past this ball bearing and so the bike uh, wet sumps as it's called that means the uh, sump fills full of oil. Um, <laughs> How, how bad is wet something? On a triple, it's not necessarily that bad because what can happen, say on a Commando or a, or a Bombard or whatever, is you'll get massive crankcase pressure building up because the, uh, the sump is full of oil and the pistons are going up and down and so it's building up huge pressure because everything's full of oil and it's got nowhere to go really. Well, it's got to pump it back to the tank but that'll take a bit of time. On a triple, because the pistons are all going up at different rate the crankcase pressure isn't that great because of course one's there's one's coming down to build up the pressure another one's going up so the only real problem for uh, wet sumping um is that uh, as far as the triple is concerned i think is that um if all the oil uh, drains from the sun, from the tank into the sump which it can do you know quite rapidly in some cases but certainly over winter <clears throat> then when you start the bike there's no oil uh, being pumped to the big ends ironically because ironically the, the actual sump is full of oil but there's no oil being pressure fed to the big ends there's oil sloshing around but no un none under pressure going to the big ends until that oil is pumped back to the tank gone back round, get to the gets to the pump through the oil filter and then to the big ends <clears throat> so that's, that's the only thing you've really got to watch for. Um, and I, I, as many people know, I always fit an inline filter to mine, um, which is very controversial because 
So the thing with these um, anti-wet sump valves is they're a push valve. So the oil, when the engine starts, obviously you want this you you want this to open. <laughs> you don't really want it closed. Um, so because you want oil ready to go from the tank into the engine when the engine's running. So what happens is uh, this is under pressure. So oil comes through, the pressure pushes the ball bearing back, and oil flows. But on an inline um, valve such as I've got that works on suction rather than so rather than the oil being pushed as the um, the oil is sucked by the oil pump demand and that suction opens the valve which isn't quite as foolproof as a valve that opens through pressure um, now and and you know we've been around this a thousand times really it's a matter of total personal choice I fit them to my bikes I've got them on both my tridents these anti-drain valves and inline valves and I've got one of my commando and uh, I've never had any problem at all and they never ever ever wet sump so I never have to worry about draining the tank or you know draining the sump or anything like that I know that they're fine other people say oh, that's too dangerous you know I mean Velocets had this the, the inline valve system fitted for years and years and they were fine you would always hear a horror story about these valves. Uh, I mean, if somebody fits an inline valve and you know, it, it didn't work and the engine seized, who knows? All I can tell you is I fitted three to my three bikes and they're fine. But that's a matter of total personal choice. If you do fit an inline suction valve, which by the way works completely, they, you know, it doesn't wet some, then you need to remove this because then you've got two, otherwise you've got two valves and that's probably too much you know, and, and you, you might well have oil starvation then. But um, uh, as I don't think the owner's fitting, planning on fitting one, then we'll put this in. Uh, you can always take it out later. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to try and seat this ball bearing in the crankcase so that the oil doesn't seep past it quite as easily. I don't think you can ever stop it. Of course, you could put a stronger spring in, that'd stop it. But of course, it would also stop the oil getting past it when the engine started. <laughs> and you don't want that. So uh, I'm going to, that's why I've got this punch out. I'm going to put the ball bearing in and I'm going to get a hammer, put it down, get a hammer and try and seat it in the, uh, I can't remember where it is, it's down here somewhere. I'll put it in and I'm going to knock that ball bearing to try and seat it as well as I can in the casing and to stop, to try and stop as much oil getting past it as possible. And therefore, whilst it might wet some, hopefully it will do it slower than it would have done. Whew, that was a bit of a long-winded, but very important because, you know, you have to make that decision. Are you going to put, keep with this and put up with a wet something or are you going to get rid of this and fit an inline valve and risk what some people will say is sort of a catastrophic damage to your engine? Although, you know, I do think that is a bit apocryphal and uh, it's always a mate of a friend for so-and-so that his engine blew up. And, and to be honest, I think the engine probably would have blown up anyway you know, because they were only doing 9,000 revs down the straight and it blew up and it was obviously the valve. Oh, I'm not sure. You know, obviously, like, you see, this one's blown up. You know, we know it has the, um, when we took it apart, we found that this, this conrod, this drive side conrod's obviously broken up at some point and the, um, it's been uh, it's been welded up and patched up. So that, that managed to do that without any help from uh, an inline valve as far as I know. No, it was, uh, no sorry, it was probably it was this side. It was the uh, timing side piston. Uh, Conrod bent. So, you know, they you know they, they, they blew up anyway. Of course, if it did have an inline valve fitted and blew up, then everyone said, oh, it was obviously the inline valve that was the fault. But, you know, that'd be coincidence because obviously this was blown up anyway. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, there we go. All right, uh, enough talking. I'm going to get on and do this. Um, I'm probably not going to do this on camera. Um, I think it's pretty straightforward what I'm going to do. That's going to... I'm going to put that gasket on. That's going to go in there. Uh, then the spring, the cap, sorry, that gasket. And then the, that's it, screwed up. Um, yeah, one thing to note, in the manual it says that this um, coarse sort of gauze is for a triple. And then there, there are valves like this and pressure relief valves like this and they have a fine gauze. And apparently that's for the twin but when i bought a new one recently i was given one with a fine gauze and i was told that's the only one they do now and it will work in the triple 
and that's you know I'm, and i don't know any better but originally that that core scores means that's a triple um um oil pressure release valve and a fine mesh gauze is for for a twin what the difference would be inside i have no idea but that's 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 the way it was but i'm told that that's now changed okay and there's the uh, anti-drain valve uh, in place with its crush washer um i just mentioned that i've uh, cleaned off the worst of the uh, excess uh, uh, well seal uh, and to do that I think it's um, cellulose thinners what I actually use is uh, PVCU cleaner that I get from the double glazing shop it's you know it's one of it's, what it says acetone free solvent I think it's cellulose cleaner it's one of those that really strong fumes again but it's the only thing I know that will get rid of it will wipe down well seal like white spray won't touch it so if you do want to <clears throat> wipe off the excess um gasket sealant uh, if you've got well seal then that's what you want okay uh that's that uh, i'm just going to turn the engine back over and we'll have a quick look at the uh, oil pressure release valve and there is the oil pressure release valve uh, fitted uh, there's not a torque for either torque setting for either of those by the way so i've just done them up uh, pretty tight as tight as i dare bearing in mind that you're bolting into alloy um but uh, i think they should both be fine right uh and uh so next i've i've now got the barrels and head etc back from the engineers at long, long last so uh i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to mount the engine on back on the stand and then i'm going to put the i wouldn't normally do this um yeah, well, I think I'll put the barrels on at least. It's just I want to check. I really want to check the the, the um, valve timing uh, because it's been it's been um, sort of adjusted on this as far as I know to give maximum power. But obviously, I want to check it. And the only way I can really check it is when the head, when the barrels and the head and the rock boxes and the valves are back on, and then I can check from the valves exactly what the engine timing is, the valve timing. So. I'd like to do that, but I can only really do it when the whole top end is built. So I'm not sure. What I might do is carry on building the bottom end and, and, and the gearbox and so on and just leave. Can I do that? Can I leave the time inside off? No, I can't really. No, so I'm thinking out loud. Um, yeah, what, yeah, oh, sorry. I'll probably build, a, I'll put the barrels on, but not the head. I can do that. That'll be okay. Because, of course, if I turn the engine over with the head on and the camshaft's not turning, it, that one of the valves is bound to be open and it's going to hit the valve. But um, as long as it's only the barrels on, we're fine. Yeah, so that'll be next. Uh, mount the engine and then get the uh, pistons on, two outer pistons, barrels on, and then mount the centre piston from the top and do it up from uh, up through the sump plate put the sump plate on and the barrels are on and then we'll start building the bottom end of the engine up. Oh, well, slowly, slowly, but we're getting there. 